Hi guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're all well. Um, today I decided to talk to you guys about um, ways of responding to challenging clients. So I did a video a while back talking about the type of clients that I have to deal with. Some were good and some were quite um, challenging and this was actually a comment someone made. Um, they thought it would be advisable for me to do a video talking about how to respond to these kind of clients if you ever come across them so i thought yeah it's a good idea so i hope this is helpful and beneficial for you guys give it a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already okay so let's get right into it so in my previous video if you haven't seen it i think it's called um types of clients in social work something like that something along those lines i'll put a link um down below um for people that are um, interested so um yeah basically in social work obviously you work with people um people come with in like with different personalities and things like that so you need to know how to manage different behaviors because it can get quite it can get quite difficult um and people start to take certain things personal and that's when you get bent out and you can't keep going so um it's helpful to have an idea of how to respond to certain clients i think first and foremost the most important thing no matter what client you're dealing with you need to make it clear what your role is in their life and what you can and can't do it's very very important to make that clear to them so then they don't have high expectations or you know there's very clear boundaries and everything so that's a very very important thing to do um, in my previous video I talked about clients that may be very demanding and you know would keep asking for things you keep going back to your role and you make sure you're assertive and you stick to whatever you've told them you need to be very consistent with clients as well so if a client is demanding this and that you need to make sure there's clear communication between yourself and your colleagues so that it's not like um, you know it's just you who's refusing to do something for them it needs to be clear across the organization so everyone is on the same page and then that way the client will get the message that they can't just demand for everything and expect um, to receive everything you know that they're asking for I also spoke about um, sometimes finding it difficult to get gather information out of the client if they're a quiet one or if it's they're just um, an invol uh, involuntary client so basically they're being forced to see you um, I think the um, best way of handling such clients is making sure that you're asking as many open questions as possible and um, you know identifying some goals in the beginning and then working towards that you know and you need to be aware that it's not you it's just that the client's personality is different to or um, other clients that you may come across and um, I guess using forms and things like that is quite helpful in working with quieter clients you can just go most organizations have like a form that you know you need to fill out or complete or whatever to gather as much information as possible so you're able to work with the client as best as possible so following those kind of um, forms and things like that are also beneficial for working with quiet clients that may be quieter or may not be willing to give you as much information as you require and I guess just explaining to them the reasons why you're needing that information is also beneficial um, in helping to gather more information from them and I guess um, I did talk about clients that may um, have trouble with coming in on time to see you as well I guess with them as well it's just being assertive and being consistent so if you um, make up an appointment with them for 12 o'clock and they're late you know the first time you might let it swing by but you need to stick to whatever you say I can't see you if you come in late because you know I've got other clients and blah 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 if they come five minutes late no you don't see them and you stick to that and that's the way they get the message that you know they're not your only clients and they need to be a little more organized if they're wanting ongoing support from you so you know they all 
sort of tying with, with each other is all around being assertive and being consistent and sticking to your words and you know making sure um, you're communicating that clearly to the client and um, trying to make sure that everyone else that you're working with is across with everything that you're working with the client on and you know you need to make them cl uh, clear that this is what you've told the client so you would appreciate if they're consistent with that that's it ever if they're having to work with the client as well and I guess there are some clients that would also keep um, saying that they need your service but then they never show up to appointments the same thing being consistent following through whatever you say so if you say okay i'm going to give you three chances to attend if you miss your third appointment i'm going to have to close you off and the next time you show up you're going to have to go back onto the wait list so being able to follow through with that is quite important as well in communicating that message to a client there are some clients that have trouble putting in boundaries as well. I guess being the social worker, sometimes people are quite lonely and once they start to get some kind of um, support from someone, they start to feel like you're a friend and they feel like they can call whenever. Again, it comes back to being consistent and making sure there's boundaries in place. If they keep calling, you know, you, at a point you stop responding. If you, you made an agenda to call them once a week, you make sure you stick to that and follow through with that. Anytime they call you outside those hours, you don't pick up. Make sure they are aware of emergency numbers in case it's emergencies, then they know who to call. And then they're aware that with you, it's just one call a week and that's it. I've never actually had a client who's been like physically challenging, like, you know, where they've tried to hit me or anything like that. Um, so I can't really touch on that. Anything I give to you would, would just be from a book. But everything else that I've said, I've actually experienced. So I think um, those are worthwhile telling you. But when it comes to a client that may hit you or be, get physical with you, I haven't actually encountered that. So I'm not going to talk about that. But um, all the clients that I've spoken about, as I said before, I have encountered before. And this is how I've dealt with it. And um, this is how I'm managing, you know, um, I'm managing those kind of clients. The main thing is to make sure your uh, role is clear to the client, make sure boundaries are in place and then make sure you're consistent and you're firm with whatever you say. You stick to your word and you try and communicate that with co-workers and make sure they're communicating the same thing to the client. And that's the way you sort of manage those kind of behaviors. Um, finally, um, there's another type of client that I've sort of come across is people that will sort of try to educate you about religion and how you should be this religion or that religion. How I dealt with it was I just acknowledged what they were saying. I thank them for sharing um, that information with me but then I just left it as that I told them you know I, I'm not gonna come to your church or I'm not gonna come to you know whatever religious um, get together you're wanting me to come to I'm unable to because of organizational policies but thank you for sharing and I just leave it as that and then I move on to the next topic and sometimes they do go on and on and on but you know sometimes you, you, you you feel you know you feel you need to listen because um what's it called because sometimes they just haven't had the opportunity to share these kind of things with anyone and that's all part of you supporting them so sometimes i'm happy to listen but i just don't like it when it's being shoved down my throat so you know um that's when i'll be firm and say okay thanks for sharing we need to move on because of timing and whatnot so again it's all around being assertive making sure there's boundaries in place being clear on your rules about what you can and what you can't do and you know um that's the best way of work that's the best way i've found to work with clients that may be a little bit difficult or challenging so yeah i hope this is helpful guys um i know it was a short one but yeah i'm sure it'll be helpful for someone out there if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe because i'm going to be consistent again i know i always say that and that never happens <laughs> but yeah i've got so much going on but you know every now and then i'm, I'm definitely going to upload so yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye guys